Yeah, we're right here in front. Oh, yeah, if you're not the front row, then get yeah. <laughs> Uh, not to break away from Anaheim, but what can you tell us about King Kong at Universal? Oh, here we go. I just love non-Disney questions. <laughs> well, I did for, uh, 100 jobs for uh, Disney and 150 for everybody else. <laughs> all the crazy ones I really loved were all under Girl Design Incorporated. <laughs> On King Kong, um, within uh, not too many weeks after I had left uh, Disney, uh, he started doing some work with uh, Universal, our enemy, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but there was a big difference. By that time, that Disney was getting pretty big. This is like 1981. Universal had a small, fast team of people, much like what Walt had in, in Walt's era. So that way of doing things still is alive. It's still alive today if you watch. Uh, uh, I can't get the council coming. <laughs> mm -hmm. Look at that thing. That thing is coming at high, very high speed with the same kind of that kind of fast, fast things. Anyway, Universal had owned the uh, rights to King Kong, I think 1933, and they constantly got fan mail about King Kong. So they came to us one day and they said, uh, we'd like to think about a King Kong. So we got them some ideas, and then we said, okay, this is where we might do that. They said, okay, why don't you proceed with just the head? We want to see if the head will work. So our little shop we had out in the valley, we built a full-size King Kong head, got it all working enough that you could see what it would do, but it wasn't fully animated. We had it sitting on the floor, and we had a, a old sheepskin coat from rotting in the water, so it made a banana breath like the smell of it. The mouth and the eyes worked, and we made up a, like a half a train car. We had the sound of a helicopter circling overhead. You know, we did a big dog and pony show to show the suits from Universal. And they were sitting there, and the King Kong opens his eyes and just looks at them. And all of a sudden, he opened his mouth and screamed. I got and these suits. Oh, they all came back. <laughs> and then, we, then they did a little bit of a show. And those guys were so impressed. This is the way you do. You want to, you want to do a dog and pony show when you got the suits of the top of the Universal Tourist Company. Yes, you show them something like that. And they said, okay, proceed. <laughs> so uh, we did a little bit more. And then we stopped for a couple of years because they wanted to take a, a deep breath. He said, okay, we got a budget, $7 million. We're going to build a building and an entire show. Oh, by the way, a full-size King Kong, 30 foot tall. <laughs> fixed price, fixed opening date. That is so wow. Disney. <laughs> for me, personally, it was a fun job. There was no doubt about getting it done for the time. Uh, a clue. The bigger a machine gets, the easier it gets because there's more relative space inside it. Some people I've seen even later, they will take a maquette and scale that and the machinery up and scale it. You can't do that. It gets too big, too heavy. There's a famous mountain down in Florida with a roller coaster in it. <laughs> oh, I'm not supposed to say anything negative about that. <laughs> well, you, you get the trip. I know that you have to have a, be an open thinker. <laughs> you can't do a King Kong. The doggone thing weighed almost 14,000 pounds. Wow. It was dramatically controlled. I have a little scale model of it. Uh, I had the you know, 30 inch to you know, inch to foot. I still have it. In fact, there's a, if you go to Ernie Mills, we've got a Patreon thing, and we've got some little movies in the King Kong down yeah. yeah, You can see exactly how this King Kong thing works. It's so big and so open, I had nine people writing inside it on the show test well, that's without the Universal ever catching on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, King Kong, thank you for asking that, because that, that was one of my really super, super, super projects. We had no trouble with it. No trouble installing it. It was just a great big machine that you could figure out as you went. Everybody worked on it. It was a ton of work. 660 pounds worth of fur. We had all the senseless ladies sewing up fur for the monster with the cold on it. It's quite a show. You still see little things on YouTube. They have little snippets of life. 